So stick with Bushy. And don't vote. And don't listen to liberals or Democrats or other Republicans that make fun of me. Or read the news or watch the news except for Fox. Thank you. The social contract ideally represented the portion of sovereignty citizens relinquish to the state. But nowadays we should be talking rather of the relinquished, alienated part of themselves that they rid themselves of in order to retain their sovereignty. In the same way, more or less, as we once handed over the management of money to the Jews and the usurers, we pass the dirty work of management and representation off to a body of people that has by its very act become accursed and untouchable, and which expects to take profits from it in the form of power. In the last six years, our leaders have thrown open the doors of Congress and the White House to an army of Washington lobbyists who have turned our government into a game only they can afford to play. A game played on a field that's no longer level, but rigged to always favor their own narrow agendas. From Jack Abramoff to Tom DeLay, from briberies to indictments. When they describe themselves as servants of the people and the nation, they do not know how right they are. They are, in fact, the occupants of a traditionally servile function, the administration of things. May God protect and keep them. There are no knowns. There are things we know that we know. There are no unknowns. That is to say, there are things that we now know we don't know. This discredit resurfaces in the way the political class are perpetually on trial, in the endless question of lack of public confidence for which they can find no answer. A repudiation that sounds like an invitation to suicide, the only political act worthy of the name. We dream of seeing the political class resigning en masse because we dream of seeing what a social body without a political superstructure would be like, as we dream of seeing what a world without representation would be like. A massive relief, a massive collective catharsis. In every trial, in every public challenge to a politician or statesman, this millenniarium demand resurfaces, the demand for a power that would speak out against itself, unmask itself, giving way to a radical, unhoped for, and admittedly hopeless situation, but one from which the inexorable tangle of mental corruption would be removed. That means no more illegal wiretapping of American citizens. No more national security letters to spy on citizens who are not suspected of a crime. No more tracking citizens who do nothing more than protest a misguided war. No more ignoring the law when it is inconvenient. That is not who we are. However, this art of disappearing, this predisposition to elimination and death, which is, properly speaking, sovereignty, was long ago forgotten by politicians. They are sometimes recalled to it by the involuntary sacrifice of their lives. Their sole objective remains the renewal of their class and its privileges, and it must be said, with our most total connivance, which is justified by the fact that they are the perverse instrument of our sovereignty. In this country, we've got rulers and we've got rules. So it's a ruled country, right? One always hopes that the politicians will admit their uselessness, their duplicity, their corruption. One is always on the lookout for an ultimate demystification of their sayings and doings. But could we bear this? For the politician is our mask, and if we tear it off, we run the risk of ending up with our own responsibility painfully exposed. That very responsibility we relinquish to the politician's advantage. Corruption is indeed the heart of the problem. It is never an accident. It is inherent in the exercise of power, and hence, in the exercise of evil. The whole world over, and wherever they come from, 
Those who reach the nerve center of affairs are immediately transfigured by corruption, and it is here that their real complicity is forged. But the complicity does not end there, nor the essence of evil. For the corruption of the elites is precisely the corruption of everyone. Corruption is a collective psychodrama. And since we have the leaders we deserve, if we feel contempt for them, it is only ever the reflection of the contempt we each feel for ourselves as political animals. The culture in Washington, in particular the relationship between lawmakers and lobbyists, such as those that work for drug and insurance companies. And they got what they paid for. When their friends in Congress broke the rules and twisted arms to push through a prescription drug bill that actually made it illegal for our own government to negotiate with the pharmaceutical companies for cheaper drug prices. Why are you doing this? Doubtless, we should even see corruption as one of the real rules of the game. The echo of a basic symbolic rule, different from politics and the social, which has become above and beyond all morality practical, imminent, and secret rule of operation. A serious question, this, since it concerns the whole of public morality and connects with Mandeville's hypothesis on the supremacy of vice in the happy conduct of affairs. However, there are certain liberal agitators out there who would like you to believe that my administration is not doing such a good job. Of course, these are people such as Howard Stern, Richard Clark, and the news. It is this cunning with which that, as soon as they are invested with power, politicians immediately turn against that which or those who carry them to power. There is no point then of tormenting oneself over this state of corruption, in which is to be seen the radicality of politics, or, in other words, from which we can read off what politics is in its symbolic dimension, namely, a sharing out of evil. Such is the living coin of power in the confrontation that goes way beyond representation, in a system of obligation in which there is always a gift, and a counter-gift, a lethal revenge. This is the two-sidedness of corruption. Where those in power are concerned, the aim is to corrupt the dominated to induce them in some form or other of voluntary servitude. Whereas the aim of the dominated is to corrupt the dominant precisely by their voluntary servitude, which they then turn round against them like a weapon. This is the whole strategy of the masses, the silent majorities. Thank you. Well, God bless.